What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna model the interior lobby of a university um, gallery building. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So one of the reasons that I've been doing more of these speed modeling tutorials is just because, uh, first of all, I feel like I spend a lot of time creating tutorials where uh, I, I model really quick things and I really wanted to get back into modeling some more complex things. And I figured that's, again, just kind of a good way for me to show you the way that I'm doing things inside of SketchUp. So, and uh, I'm not saying that all of my modeling practices in these are always perfect, but uh, they definitely get the job done. So in this case, the, the ideal, because I'm recreating something from a floor plan, ideally what you would like to do is you'd like to bring something in from that floor plan um, and uh, use that as kind of a reference image. I'm not 100% sure on a YouTube video if I'm allowed to do that or not with a copyrighted floor plan, so I didn't want to do that. So I am looking back and forth between the floor plan and this page um, or this image but it is definitely preferable if you can just bring the floor plan in and just draw on top of it that gets a lot easier but you can see how what I'm doing is I'm just kind of roughing out the general shape of this building so you can see how it's kind of a unique building and I'll actually link to some information about this building down below it's actually on a college campus and uh, I just really liked I saw an image of the main lobby and I really liked the main lobby, so what I wanted to do was kind of model out that and see what I could do with lights and renderings and things like that. So anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm just breaking up these faces into something that I can then use the extension Lattice Maker on in order to create my glass. And if you remember, Lattice Maker allows you to select all of these different faces and uh, kind of offset them and then uh, push pull them. So it makes a lattice, which is perfect for this kind of curtain wall application. So I will link to that extension down below, but you can see how what that allows me to do is that allows me to set the depth of my mullions and the thickness of my glass, and I can create things like this curtain wall really easy. And so I, I did notice that I got a little bit of weird turning when I did this with all three of these. So I ended up doing each side a little bit separately. And you can see how coming in here and creating this is really easy with that extension. And so once I kind of got the glass modeled out, I could focus a little more on the interior. And so the interior, it's just kind of a question of roughing out the space and just kind of showing what we want to show or modeling out things like the doors and the stairs and things like that and so you can see how because this is a two level space what I'm doing is I'm taking this area and I'm modeling out where the second floor is going to be so I'm just gonna model out about where that's gonna be and then I'm gonna push pull this wall back and again if you're modeling off of a floor plan there may be a little bit different way to do this but in this case just kind of roughing out this space is what I ended up doing and so I'm just figuring out like how far back the wall is um, behind the landing and things like that and then I'm just using the push pull tool in order to come in here and create my walls and one thing you may find helpful is sometimes turning on x-ray mode allows you to go back in and push pull some faces and make some faces that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do and uh, so I actually made that a keyboard shortcut the x key turns on uh, the x key turns on x-ray mode inside of SketchUp so that can be really helpful and then the next thing I did is I came in here and I modeled the stair and I actually tried like three different things um, you can see how instant stair is actually up here um, that's an extension from Valley Architects. It's a really good stair creation tool, but in this case, just because of the weird way that the landings turned and everything else, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me in this application. So what I did is I just manually, what I did is I manually modeled these stair treads out myself. And then what I did is I used an extension called Memory Copy, and I will link to a tutorial on that, but Memory Copy allows you to um, basically use the locations of components in order to repeat a movement over and over again. So what it allowed me to do is it allowed me to basically dictate that these steps were going to go up about six and a half inches and then over by whatever width the stair treads were. So you can see how I was able to create those treads really easily using that extension. And so once I did that, all I had to do was come in here and kind of model the uh, the kind of guards on the end so these are also structural steel pieces because this stair is a stair that's being supported um, by the pieces on the end um, 
So all I did in this case is I'm just using the locations of the treads and then I'm just drawing lines between them. So you can see how I'm drawing a line that's like four inches tall and then I'm just copying that along the edges. And then what I can do is I can use all these edges and just create a face which I can then push pull on the ends. So you can see how I'm just kind of filling this in and I had a little bit of trouble with this. I ended up using an extension in JHS Power Bar called Face Finder. And what Face Finder does is it allows you to select all the different different edges and then make a face from them if they're coplanar. So it's a huge time saver. I'll link to some stuff about that down below. And you can see how I was able to really quickly um, I was able to really quickly create this like stringer on the end of the stairs just by using this method. So you can see I have kind of a guideline um, and then all I have to do is just draw lines between the different edges in here in order to make this face. And I did end up using Face Finder again in order to make the face here. Sometimes SketchUp just doesn't close those faces in. But then all, all I did is I just kind of made this continuous along the end and then I uh, grouped it and I push pulled it out to give it some thickness. So you can see how that gives me kind of my base shape for what this uh, what this stair is going to look like. And then I went back in and I modeled the wood base that's behind this stair. So, um, And I just kind of took a guess as to how tall the base actually is. And honestly, this stair may not be a floating stair like this. I couldn't really tell from the images, but I figured I'd go ahead and model it this way. So you'd probably have some structural posts or something like that in here. You can see how just uh, going through and just roughing out that shape and then giving it some thickness makes this pretty easy. And so then the next step was modeling out the uh, stair rails. So um, th the rails can be a little bit tricky. They were kind of a combination. I wanted to use pipe along path in order to make kind of a stainless pipe rail that runs along here. And then uh, I had to model out the faces um, for the glass rails manually. But you can see how what I'm doing right here is just figuring out where the top of my rail is going to be. Then all I have to do is draw a path um, between the endpoints of these rails and then I just use the extension pipe along path in order to generate a pipe there. So you can see I'm just selecting these edges, I'll run pipe along path, and uh, I can generate a two inch pipe along that edge really easily. And so then I just did the same thing on the other side over here. And it's even easier over here because you really only have a couple different locations where these aren't just long, um, unbroken sections of rail. So then I had to come in here and I had to model out the actual glass panels. And I probably could have used something in like instant rail or something like that. Um, but in this case, I just went ahead and modeled them out myself. So you can see I just drew out the faces where the glass was. And then I just kind of split it into what I thought the size of the um, the glass panes were going to be. And one thing I did is I came in here and uh, I, I broke these up because you're actually, when you look at a glass rail like this, there's a little gap in here um, because you have these different glass pieces. And so what I did is I just went in there and I just drew a little 16th of an inch um, recess and then I just used the push pull tool to extrude that back. So, and there may have been an easier way to do this. Um, nothing presented itself at the time, so I just modeled it. So it probably took me, I don't know, like 20 minutes or something like that. So not a ton of extra work, just a lot of manual like fixing of things. And you can see how I kind of applied a glass material to this after I did that just to kind of see how that would look and what the whole assembly looked like. And so on the top side, I actually had a different strategy. Um, instead of um, going in and removing the material, in this case, I went ahead and and I modeled out the gap before I push pulled these into a quarter inch thick piece of glass. So that way all I had to do was draw the 16th of an inch gap once and then copy it across. So you can see I'm drawing that and then I use the move tool in copy mode to copy that uh, nine times from here to the end. So then I could just go in and just push pull them back really um, or just erase out that extra material that was in there. So you can see I'm just push pulling all of these to a thickness of a quarter inch. And then all I had to do was erase the little line making up this back edge in here. So, and again, just kind of time consuming, but not really super hard to do modeling or anything like that. And so once I got through with that, um, I started kind of taking a look at the scene as a whole and kind of what it looked like, what I was missing, that kind of thing. You know, there's always a point where you're looking at this and thinking, okay, what's my next step? And so I started working on a little bit of detail, like assuming that there's going to be a wood base piece running all the way along here, things like that. So you can see I'm just drawing that out and then push pulling that. And then once I started looking at that, I realized I needed to kind of fill in the gap behind these stairs. And honestly, these stairs up here might have been a little bit different because they wouldn't really be 
floating stairs. So all, all I did in this case is I just kind of filled this in and then I left this face behind these steps, but you might model them a little bit different depending on what your stair construction actually, actually looks like. Um, but then I did a little bit of an offset here just because there's going to be a wood trim piece and we'll fill that in with material in the next tutorial. But I just kind of started messing around with uh, like viewpoints and that kind of thing, just figuring out what, uh, what this scene is going to look like, what my camera views are going to look like and all of that. And then another thing that I needed to do is I needed to come in here and model out a vestibule because this building wouldn't necessarily have just a giant pair of doors opening to the outside because the mechanical systems, um, you, you want to have kind of an air barrier in there from the outside to the inside. So if somebody opens the door, you don't just like let all the hot air out. So what I did is I just came in here and I modeled out a little, uh, a little vestibule and I had to erase some things out that were created by Lattice Maker, but that's okay. You can kind of go back and model those back in a little bit later. Um, so all I did is I just modeled a base piece here and then I just drew a line down the midpoint of these and then I used the extension extrude tools. I used extrude edges by vector. So that just allows me to create a face from a set of edges. And then I just used the push pull tool to come in here and give these a little bit of thickness. So in this case, I made them quarter inch glass again. And uh, that may or may not be realistic, but that's what I used. And uh, you can see how I just came in here and just gave it a little bit of a roof. And I may have to add some structural columns in here to make it look realistic. I haven't quite figured that piece out yet. Um, but all I did is I did the same thing here where I ended up just uh, making the little gap um, so that it's visible between these pieces. Um, and that's just more as a visual indicator that these are doors. I'll probably go back and model some, uh, some door pulls or something like that. And then the last thing I did in this particular tutorial, because I didn't want to get too far into, uh, I didn't want to get too far into materials in this one, just because that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing that takes a lot longer. And so all I did is the last thing I did is I came in here and I modeled out my sunshades. And so the way that I modeled out my sunshades is I just drew a line along the edge here and I used that as a path. So, and then I took these lines and I grouped them and I had a few problems uh, getting these lines to group up properly. I ended up going in and managing those using the outliner. But once I grouped these three lines in a path and named it sunshades, I could go in and I could draw a profile and figure out kind of how wide those sunshades were. And then just once I've drawn it once, I can copy it up and down. So I can use the move tool in copy mode. So you can see how I just extruded my sunshade profile here and then um, I made it a component and then I just copied it down here and if you remember the move tool lets you create copies between points so I just typed in divided by and the number of copies that I wanted to create that allowed me to create the array of copies of this the sunshades that you see in here then the last thing I did is I just came in and I kind of played with my sunlight um, just because um, the, the sunlight coming through with those sunshades is what's gonna make this view really interesting so that's where I'm gonna end this video leave a comment below let me know what you thought um, do you have any questions about anything that I did do you like this kind of video. I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.